Hello, this is Paul with Logic's Workshops. Are you wondering what you should put on your resume to get your first automation job? Are you looking for a job as a controls automation technician or engineer? Maybe you're worried about what to put on your resume. Well, want some advice? If so, then this video is for you. Now, just to be clear, if you have no experience no online training certificates, no college degree, no intern experience, um, no trade school certificate, and no project portfolio to speak of, then ultimately there's nothing this video can do for you. Now, I know that searching for any job is daunting for most of us. Uh, and if this is your first job, uh, it's gonna be probably your most scariest. However, if you're a little older like I was doing a midlife career change into the automation field, it might be a little different. You know, I was 40 when I moved into the automation industrial world. Before that, I could barely wire a lamp. Maybe you're just out of college and the fear and insecurities you felt as a kid looking for your first after school job is kind of flooding back. Only this time, you're looking for more money because you've worked as an intern. You've developed real world skills working part time and you've built a powerful project portfolio. Maybe you've also spent some serious time at home and in a university or trade school developing projects and you're looking to level up into professional automation position. Well, that means you're going to have to build a professional resume. Now, I want to make this really clear. I'm not talking about a resume your sister's friend who took English in college wrote for you. Not at all. I'm talking about the kind of resume a small town bank president would use to get their job. A six figure resume. And they are different. There are differences. If you do not have any pre pre prerequisite training or experience, I suggest you do get something to build a strong resume on because there is nothing anyone can do for you yet. If you don't, it's too early for you to be thinking about getting hired. So to start with, you have to bring something to the table and then, and only then, can you begin to think about building your resume? This video is for those who have some knowledge, some education or certification and a portfolio to speak of. Now in today's world, even, a, even all that won't guarantee you a job, uh, at least not the job that you desire, because there's a lot of competition, which means sending hundreds of resumes and doing dozens of pre-screen interview calls and traveling from, from on-site meetings and, and place to place and possibly waiting for months for a decision that may or may not land in a great job. In addition, you're going you're gonna to be looking to find a company who can see your limited experience and is willing, still willing to take a chance on you basically to hire you and complete your training in the controls and automation world. With that, there are several things you can do, and there are some things you have to do with your resume, basically to give yourself an edge. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> okay, this is very important. The first and most important thing you need to consider is the phrase single purpose. Basically, I'm giving you a pointer. It's, it's do not use a single resume for every job opportunity from engineer to technician to let's, just, let's assume you're going to in sales. All those would be totally different resumes. Each of those jobs I have mentioned are unique. While you may be able to and willing, be able and willing to work in all of them, they each require a focused resume. My advice is to write different resumes for each job you apply to that's, that focuses on that specific job. 
Start by writing a career summary and describe your interesting experience and then work to customize it to the specific job you're applying for. I know it's extra work, but it is the proper way to do it. All right, now, second one, I'm gonna handle some, some challenges. You may have some gaps in your work history. Don't worry about it. Almost no one has a perfect work history. So don't worry about the gaps in yours. Instead, basically what you wanna do is be able to explain those gaps. For example, you could explain that you got laid off and then decided to take on a few contract opportunities for the three months gap you had in between jobs. Then be willing to show them your work and references. And believe it or not, you can take a couple of months off for training to, to take on some training, so long as you got the certificates, that can explain your work and that's value to the employer. So the third one is keywords. Yes, you're going to have to make sure you use some keywords in your resume. For example, I always make sure that I list all the different PLC platforms and languages I can program to, uh, to include the hardware brand names like Allen Bradley, Siemens, Schneider, Automation Direct, etc. Also include the equipment you've programmed, like conveyors, and not just conveyors, but the brand name of the conveyors you've worked on or programmed, okay? Very important, get granular in detail. Now, recruiters and HR managers review tens of thousands of resumes in, in a year's time. They have learned to scan for keywords, and they have used software that does the exact same thing. It scans for keywords. So make sure you make their work easier. So in today's environment, social media. Yes, you have to consider your social media. I believe in listing all of my social media property for them on my resume to review. In today's world, you're gonna be scrutinized via the community for endorsements on LinkedIn, uh, the LinkedIn group, uh, group and professional affiliations, as well as your content on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, size following, etc. even if you don't like it, even if you don't think it should have a bearing on your employability, it's still going to get done, right? There really is no such thing as privacy these days. Your life is on display on the networks, so make sure you only post public stuff uh, no one would find objectionable, all right? All right, contract work. If you've done any contract work, on the side, you should list it. And don't be afraid to show your, your uh, projects and experience if you're permitted. It goes to show them that in between gaps and as a part-time gig, you've been busy growing your skills. In addition, you can use that experience to demonstrate your personal initiative, communication skills, and leadership experience on these projects. Uh, be prepared to showcase email communication if your client doesn't mind the previous client doesn't mind, and the work that you've put into your portfolio. Again, get granular. Be willing and able to talk about the work that you have done. Be proud of that work, okay? In particular, make sure that you, are, you can describe what you have learned. All right, volunteer work, uh, volunteer work. In today's world, we all need to give a little back. It goes to show your social conscience. A lot of companies are doing this today. If you've done any work at all, maybe at your local church, the YMCA, your kid's school band, or even as a coach or literally of, on a Little League baseball team, companies are looking for someone to demonstrate uh, that they have a mature and well-rounded personality and understand the concept of gratitude. All right. References. I list my references on my resume only if they are industry leaders are directors or C-suite title holders. And I only put three of them at the bottom, okay? If you're, if you're starting out, you likely haven't built up a strong reference library, but not to worry. You just need to list some solid references because they are, go they are likely going to contact them. So be sure to prep your references about your new job search and how they can best help you. Prep them with, uh, by, by helping them craft a reference. For example, a supervisor may know about your ability to manage multiple projects. And another may know uh, you for your ability to work long, do, work long hours doing stressful work. All right? Okay, now your portfolio. 
while working and going to school or taking an online automation training course, I hope you have taken the time to build a strong projects portfolio. And it's these projects uh, you can add to your resume. For instance, I had a large complex conveyor right, uh, project at night after work while working for a company that took me a couple of months to complete in my early days. So I showcased that project. I listed what we developed, the drawings, the HMI, uh, the PLC program. I printed it out in PDF. I made I made notes on the, on the PDF of the program that I that I wanted to highlight. I listed a web address where they could learn more about me and the projects I've compiled in my online portfolio. Basically, what I did is started a a. Uh, web blog, okay, a WordPress blog, and posted some stuff on there so the recruiters can, and I put that address on my resume, they can go right there and read about all the different types of projects that I did, that it's videos and notes. You know, keep in mind that recruiters and HR managers only take about a minute on average statistically to review your resume. It's, it's highly important to create a great first impression. Also, being new, it's important to remain honest about your experience and skills because statistically 75% of your competitors are going to lie and get caught. Review your completed resume for grammatical errors as 77% of your competition won't. Okay. All right. Create a single page resume because many decision makers, they don't like multiple page resumes. So keep it simple. Make it easy for those who are reviewing your resume. Remember one minute, also, and finally, if you have any questions, reach out to me and I will do my best to help you. All right. So until next time, this is Paul with Logics Workshops. We'll see you next time.